Good morning. Welcome again to Y254 TV. This is Y in the morning where we get to do WCW and Strength of a Woman. In this week's Strength of a Woman, we are highlighting Senator Esther Okenuri, who is the youngest senator. She's in the building to talk to us about matters, women and governors. Thank you so much. I'm mm -hmm. happy to be here. <laughs> we really appreciate your coming. It's my first time. I actually didn't know we have a young or youthful channel like this. So I'm happy to be on this platform. We really appreciate yeah. it. So let's just start, dive right in. You're mm -hmm. the youngest senator. Yes, yes. And I think I um, uh, for in that case, I say maybe I was an anticipated visitor mm -hmm. in the Senate. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I came in after someone left the Senate to join the cabinet as a cabinet secretary. Mm -hmm. So I joined other senators two months later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe briefly introducing myself. Okay. As you've said it very well, my name is Okenyuri Esther. I'm a nominated senator by the United Democratic Alliance Party. Mm -hmm. And the youngest, yes, for that case. You know, people say the Senate is a house of mm, retirees. <laughs> <laughs> but we're here to change narrative, though, by way of special election. Mm -hmm. That's nomination. Yeah. So I serve as the vice chair of the Trade, Industrialization, and Tourism Committee. I'm a member of the Senate Health Committee and a member of the Powers and Privileges Committee. Uh, generally, um, we are now here. There are so many other issues that are going on in the Senate. Mm. But maybe briefly, because now this is a young people set up, mm. maybe I should just give my story in a brief. Sure. I would probably inspire someone yeah. out there. <laughs> I actually, I went to school, yes. I eventually did well in my primary school, joined Kenya High School. I then later joined Masai Mara University. In Masai Mara University, as I served as a student leader. Mm -hmm. In high school, I was also a, a school official in primary. So you see, mm -hmm. I'm building up a, a case on leadership. Yeah. So after campus, like any other hustling young person, mm -hmm. I was out here, I think, for one year, trying to get a footing. And the first job I got was with Safaricom as a call center person, those guys who mm. pick your calls mm. when you're calling to so complain those ones about that are, are saying um, <laughs> Yes, yes. Sorry, the move <laughs> subscriber. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I was there I think for seven months, then I left to join now politics. By then the twenty seventeen um, campaigns for the re election of President Uhuru Kenyatta then mm. were top notch. And because of my experience as a student leader mm. I had also done a lot at my community, especially mm. with the young people. We have a community-based organization by the name Kisi Youth Alliance. Mm. So most of the activities we engaged in, especially on charity, and at times we involved ourselves in these political processes. Mm. So it is at that point that I actually had an encounter with the deputy president then, His mm. Excellency Dr. William Ruto, now the president. Mm. And we really worked very hard to ensure that the president who was seeking re-election then was elected. Mm -hmm. And I was anticipating to be nominated to the county assembly of mm -hmm. Kisi. Mm -hmm. Because I was in the village, guys did uh, some ujanja in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I went to court, I went to the lower court, high court, court of appeal, and I thought, I think justice at times, <laughs> you can be frustrated. Yeah, yeah, true. So now I, I left pursuing court. I now went back home to continue with other activities I was mm -hmm. helping my mother with. So at that point, I think a year later, uh, I had an opportunity to then work at the office of the deputy president. You see how God mm -hmm. works. Mm -hmm. That door actually closed and another door opened. So uh, in his office, I worked in the strategy and delivery unit, and mm -hmm. our work was, was majorly on TVET, because you remember Jubilee had an agenda of equipping young people with skills in a bid to solve or curb the issue of youth unemployment. Mm -hmm. 
So I worked together with the members of parliament from the different constituencies, at least in pushing this agenda. And somehow, because uh, Honorable William Ruto has always had the issue of technical education mm -hmm. skills at heart, we were able to implement that very successfully. So later then, at the verge of the um, breakup in <laughs> Jubilee, I opted to stick with the deputy president, because then is the one who had given me that opportunity. And politically, I thought it's good to stick with someone who was with you when you were in bad times. Mm -hmm. So uh, later, <coughs> now we now UDA came up. We contributed to the building of UDA. I was um, contributing largely to the command centers. You would see that were giving parallel results before IBC did their thing, all the way from Samweni to Kiamba. I also ran um, Women for Ruto, a movement that was mobilizing young women to support the election of Dr. William Ruto as president. I also was key in communication, in, uh, in, in messaging of what our what our manifesto and agenda as Kenya Kwanza was, all this culminated to my shortlisting in the, in the nomination list. You understand we have 47 elected senators from the 47 counties, then we have 16 women, we have two youth, we have two persons with disability. So as per cases of gender issues, the Senate is compliant because then we have the 16 women you know, unlike the National Assembly. So that's how I ended up in the Senate when I actually, now in the, the, first, the first time uh, UDA nominated eight people, I was number nine on the list. So I, I, I didn't manage. <laughs> <laughs> so people, someone would ask why, okay, how did you feel? Yeah, yeah. I th but I was very optimistic because my, my first interest was I really wanted to see William Ruto ascend to power because mm -hmm. I know he had, uh, he still has a very good uh, agenda and interest for especially ordinary people because mm -hmm. he's been there before, so he understands. Because look at my case, I didn't know William Ruto. Mm -hmm. We met Uko and on the ground Mashinani, mm -hmm. and the rest uh, was history. But I think he's a man who knows how to identify talent and uh, inspire team spirit. So when uh, Soi Pantuya Honrebo, the cabinet secretary, left because initially she was nominated, mm -hmm. so they are fell uh, uh, a vacant. Uh, vacant. Yeah. So that's how I came in. I was next on the IBC list. So now I'm in, and I'm in the Senate. Immediately I got my first assignment was to serve in the impeachment committee that was listening to the case. Uh, by the Meru MCAs mm -hmm. against their own How is governor. That? <laughs> you just from I'm just imagining you just from uh, you thought this is not here. Like yeah, you know and you, you thought you sudden, had lost it. Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you're now here and yes. not only that, you be, you've been thrown into the into the Can you imagine? Span. But I think uh, the, the the opportunity actually came at the right time. Mm -hmm. I now had a platform or have a platform to show people what I basically can do, or what I was capable of doing, or maybe what they would have missed by not having me <laughs> in the Senate. I, I, I have a question I want to ask you. Mm -hmm. um, given the story you, you, you've narrated, mm -hmm. you have a couple of you have a couple of setbacks where you very know, many you only that have made it very shorter <laughs> <laughs> you have a couple of setbacks hmm. how are you able to navigate through setbacks those setbacks and you know I imagine am, to this point. i am a very resilient person mm -hmm. and i think this is what makes me different you know uh, most young people of my age might not have the energy to keep fighting, but you then you realize the society is not friendly to you at all. First, because you're a young person, then you're a woman, mm -hmm. then who knows you anyway? Mm -hmm. I was not among those big names who are anticipated. Mm -hmm. So you see, you're dealing with very 
many issues before you even get to the level where the rest are. Mm. So you don't give up and you, I strongly believe in hard work mm. and God. Those three things, I think with those you, you should not be able to give up on anything you want to do. Because I'm a true example, I actually keep insisting that I'm a true example of the bottom-up philosophy that we largely campaigned on. Because look at this. I am from a very tiny village in Kisi, mm -hmm. which some of you would not even locate its coordinates. And then here comes um, someone by the name a Deputy President identifying me. I am not a big name. And consequently, I mm. failed to get to the county assembly. Mm. Then the next thing, I'm, um, I also fail in the first attempt to get to the Senate. But then God opens other doors. And I, now I have that platform. And then if you actually observe my journey, looks like God surely has a plan for me because things are opening up. Mm. But then I attribute it to be living in God and working very hard. When you do straight things, mm -hmm. your, your agenda will always succeed because then you're networking with the right people. You're not concentrating in meddling in other people's affairs. You have an agenda, so you get focused on what, what you want to do. Um, do you experience um, instances where people think that oh she's young, oh she's a woman, oh she can't like mm. people view you differently <laughs> in terms of perception and making decisions. Um, initially, okay, maybe I would say initially, initially there's those instances because I first I be I personally carry myself a bit. Um, I'm um, easy, so by the, t uh, by the time you even say, oh, sometimes I go to places and people, be before someone even, rea uh, before I even say, oh, um, someone would ask me, even when I walked to this place, the soldier at the gate asked me, what's your name? And I was like, I'm Okenyuri. Okay, I didn't even say, I'm Senator Okenyuri. Okay, so before you realize someone would handle you differently, mm -hmm. when they realize and they are trying to now, <laughs> deal with to, no. to try being being nice yeah. i'm like Behave. you don't have to treat people because of the positions they mm -hmm. hold mm -hmm. just treat people equally the way you would want to be treated mm -hmm. so i agree first at first there are people who feel like that but then when now you sit in committees you present your issues at the floor of the house then people realize this is not even the person we were <laughs> This is not mm -hmm. the person we were thinking, like either is incapable. And then they now treat you like they would treat other people. In fact, at the Senate, I would say we have very sober, honorable members, very accommodative. I think it's the best platform I would have had at this point to learn from. I'm actually running from, learning from the best debaters, grassroots mobilizers. Um, loyal persons in their various parties. So uh, I'm learning from a wide range of um, quality, quality, quality uh, in the political process. So yes, being a young person, at times people would think maybe there's nothing much you have to offer, but how people view you is how you present yourself. If you present yourself like a joker, that's how people will treat you. Yeah. If you present yourself like a serious individual, people will surely handle you like that. And you will share tables with the, the who's because mm -hmm. of how you carry yourself. So you, do not, so you do not have to doubt the things you're presenting. Be confident in what you're doing. No one is going to... No one is going to stand up and say, I think I like AC. Before you, before you actually even like and believe in what you're doing, you have to believe in what you're doing first before members of the public surely stand up and also say, we think we subscribe to what AC is doing or what AC is talking about. That's how you get following and that's how you get 
uh, people embracing whatever ideas you bring. Because at the Senate also, it involves lobbying, engaging uh, other senators so that your issue is able to proceed. You cannot work as a one-man, uh, uh, like it's a one-man show. You, are, you have to embrace teamwork, uh, consulting, because you, don't, you also do not have monopoly mm -hmm. of ideas. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, uh, similarly to that question, mm -hmm. you came in to replace Soipantria. Is there a perception that there is, you need to fit into Soipantria's uh, shoes? Uh, not really. Uh -huh. I am, um, Essie is a very different person. Mm -hmm. I have a way of uh, I have a way of articulating issues which is a be, which could be different from what mm. she was doing, and I'm bringing in a new a new looking of things. I'm a young person. I am a woman for that matter. Mm. The region I come from, and I represent the young people who are from ordinary backgrounds who are struggling to make it in these national platforms. So I think I'm, I'm different, I'm bringing a different taste of, uh, a taste of things in this political process and in the Senate to be specific. Because you realize as young people, if you're not in a decision-making platform, your issues will rarely be discussed. Mm -hmm. And I tend to keep encouraging young people that all of us cannot be at the Senate, but we are at the Senate. You can express your views through us, because that's where we are on those platforms. You can equally uh, channel your contributions through the different youth organizations they belong to. Because then those organizations normally, like during um, a making of laws, Sometimes the bill is sent out to the public for public, you know, they need mm -hmm. views from the mm -hmm. public. Mm -hmm. At that point, we are looking up to young people, those youth organizations, to give their views um, so that we also have young people views so that we can push le legislation that is relevant to our fellow young people. So, yes. Uh, there are those who would look at, you know, want to compare you, but I think I'm completely different and I'm, and I'm bringing a different way of looking at leadership that you actually do not have to be very abrasive to get your point across. Mm -hmm. You can actually negotiate and be very accommodative and differ calmly and still achieve what you want to do. What do you think is the greatest impediment for women to scale higher in leadership roles? Um, one, most of us look at the whole issue of empowerment or the discussion about gender. You know, the discussion about gender is not just about women. Because now we are in a situation where, if you realize nowadays, sometimes you even attend interviews, there are more women than the men. So I think where most of our women fail is first pursuing the agenda of women empowerment like a war against men. Mm -hmm. The more you take it <laughs> like a war against men, you've lost it yeah. before you even begin. Mm -hmm. Now, because like me, most of the people, uh, I'm supported by women, but equally by a large number of men. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to sell myself out there like we are agitating for women. Yes, we want more women in these spaces, but we also have to realize our male counterparts are mm. part of our existence mm. and we actually need to have them in this agenda so that we can achieve. For example, look at the National Assembly and the Senate. We are not, women are not the majority. So if you are to push your agenda under the issues of, because you are a woman, they will never sail through. So you have to find a way, yes, you are a woman, but you have to realize even the male counterparts do exist and they are part of these processes. And to actually achieve what we want to do, we have to incorporate them as our champions also. Mm -hmm. So largely when I look at it, that's one. Then secondly, women are financially incapacitated mm -hmm because there's a direct relationship be between finances and politics. 
so many other things require resources. Most women have either to take care of their children, do family work, or if they're even going to work, they're not earning as much as uh, maybe their husband mm -hmm. would be earning. So are you going to spend your little savings in politics or take care of your family? Mm -hmm. So for those ones who opt to spend it in politics, at times people would eat your money and you don't even win and you'll be back frustrated. So finances, the issue of looking at this as a war against men, and the other one, we come from societies that have generally accepted that, you know, may, the male uh, counterparts are the ones who are fit to be in those positions. So we need to really work in trying to change the perception. And you can only change by the per perception by incorporating them in this process of the things you're doing. If you're going to the ground to meet people, don't just meet women, meet even the male, uh, the male uh, voters so that you involve them in whatever you're doing that way. Uh, you'll be changing the perception slowly. And I think so, uh, so far I, we are doing well. You see we have more than five female governors. We have so many elected women in single constituencies apart from the women representatives. Mm. So I think we are, we are on a right footing because I equally still believe it's not about the numbers. Mm -hmm. It's about the quality of the people we are bringing in those houses. We should be in a position whereby you can surely campaign on an agenda or issues and your people mm -hmm. elect you by not looking at you as a woman first. And this will largely lie on how you handle yourself. Yes. Do you think it's necessary for us to have a conversation about women? I think a we've had, you know, so much awareness mm -hmm. has been done on women. I think the society is now aware. It's up to the women to now fit in mm -hmm. in the society and blend with every other person. Because then if we overemphasize on that, then we risk what we are now seeing. Boy child wanna complain sana. Mm -hmm. And I do not have uh, sufficient statistics to show the same, mm -hmm. but you, you can tell, you, you can actually see it. Even when we walked in this room, <laughs> you, you know, you could yeah. just tell. Okay. So I think the, con the conversation about women empowerment has been, it's been, awareness has been largely created. Mm -hmm. What just needs to be done is for the women to know they are now fit to go out for some of these positions, not just politics, even in the corporate sector, even in the different uh, groups that are existing. Don't look at it like, you know, what are people going to say about mm -hmm. me? Like when I went to Masai Mara University, I contested and became the first female vice president of the student union. Why? Because when I came, I realized the ladies were not going for that position. They were just going for catering and there was another one. So they were going for <laughs> two. So I decided I wanted to change this narrative. Mm -hmm. And do you know, people buy in. You have to set an agenda. Mm -hmm. You have to set an agenda, but driven from what you hear that is lacking where people are. You know, you, you can't come up with a solution which is not like people initiated. The people, I largely insist on the people because in political leadership, they are everything. You can't come today with a project and say, okay, I'm starting this project. Mm -hmm. You've not sought the views of people mm -hmm. on how they think they can solve those ordinary problems. Mm -hmm. I think, and I think that's another thing uh, generally this country is facing. But uh, as we, we proceed, I think that the conversation, a lot of awareness has been done. It's now, I'm now challenging the young women out there and young people to take up these spaces because uh, you will not be followed up and be given something from the comfort of your chair. You have to come out and show the world what you can do. Yeah. Um, I understand you have a passion for 
young people mm -hmm. and, and, and children mm -hmm. in particular. Yeah. Do you have any projects, any mm. organizations you're working with? So currently, you note, um, uh, this is my fourth month at the <laughs> Senate the now. But I have so many, so far I have bills in the pipeline that, mm -hmm. you know, I'm working on. I also have motions. And true to your statement, I have a lot of interest on children because I think we have so we have had so much awareness on these other categories of people mm -hmm. and no one is talking about the children mm -hmm. and they're the ones who transit to become the youth, the women, you know. Right now if you look at the media or generally social media, very worrying statistics of things that are affecting uh, school going chil uh, school going age children and thereby denying them some of the opportunities they they would have had mm -hmm. like you saw I've been even following up about the issue of uh, baby sagini yeah. whose eyes were Good. removed mm -hmm. you know i honestly think of in as much as the baby will be fine mm -hmm. but reality is something should have been done Mm. Uh, especially our justice system and society generally, we now need to embark on a serious awareness mm. uh, creation so that people know, even the Bible, even the Bible says, uh, let the children come to me. That's how, mm. that's how special they are. Mm. If we continue uh, letting our children be in very risky environments, and we are not taking action as the society or parents or the administrations in place, then we have a reason to be very worried. Mm -hmm. So I'm working on uh, several legislative uh, proposals to protect um, such, kind of, uh, such kind of issues. I have also a lot of interest on governance because you realize uh, at the Senate, we, we, we are there to defend the interests mm -hmm. of county government. Yeah. The conversation as it is now looks like devolution has stagnated. And devolution was meant to bring services closer to the people. Who are these people? They include young people who are watching us this morning. Mm -hmm. So I also have legislative proposals on, uh, in that line to also ensure there are issues that are not very clear. Whatever proposals I'll be bringing on board will be addressing some of these issues. And you see, you might not have given someone that 50 shillings, but through those proposals you're bringing, the change is trickling down to thousands of people you didn't anticipate. Yeah. Um. What do you think is the position of women in this era of technology? You know, mm -hmm. uh, the conversation right now has been on matters digital, mm -hmm. moving to the technology and mm -hmm. uh, to the digital space. Mm -hmm. Even with the culmination of the International Women's Day last week, yes. the, the, the entire conversation around was about women being in the digital space. So mm -hmm. what do you think is the place of women in, the, in technology? Currently, I can. I current, I do not have uh, yet statistics I can quote, but I think we do not have a very good number of women uh, embracing the digital space. And if we have them, they are women within a certain age, young people. I celebrated International Women's Day in my village, and I can tell you when we had that conversation most of those older women do not even understand. Mm -hmm. And you see, for that category of people, we will not compel them to join some of those platforms or embrace <laughs> some of mm -hmm. those ideas. <laughs> the only alternative would be then to have the young people who can support, maybe disseminate information that they would have rather mm -hmm. found on in those spaces. Because we also want to deal with the realities we are facing. Uh, there are mobile phone providers who are providing smartphones to people in those rural areas. A smartphone that would have cost 10,000 shillings, when they provide it and tell you to pay 
by the end of the month, you see, you like you pay daily with interest. Mm. By the time you're done paying, you've paid like 20,000. Mm. So people in those villages, let me use the example, maybe the young women in the village. Is someone going to pay for a smartphone or are they paying for their children to go to, to school? So in as much as we want women to embrace that conversation, because it will largely solve a part of the challenges we have, but we also have to be alive to the realities of the challenges we, are in, we, encounter, we encounter as a country and as a people. It's a priority, yes, to be in a society that is techno-savvy because then we are solving many other issues. Like you'll be able to do very many things from the comfort of where you are. You can share information, you can do research, you can improve uh, issues of farming, education, you see. But the reality is, it's still a challenge because of the economic status that majority of the Kenyans are in. I'm not going to look for a smartphone and I have to buy meals for my yeah. supper. But for the ones who have, uh, I would really encourage, especially young people, to use their gadgets and social media platforms positively. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a beneficiary of good use of social media. Most people who know me have known me through either Facebook, yeah. Twitter, and because of the, the kind of content I share. And for the ones who are not on those social platforms, who are either doing research, use that to come up with innovations can, that can provide, or can, that can provide uh, solutions to the challenges we are facing in this country. But for the ordinary mamamboga who just need mulkamuzia to communicate, mm -hmm. I think we need to understand them at that point that I'd rather uh, buy a daily uh, look for something to feed myself rather than acquire a smartphone. Mm -hmm. But it's a good conversation. But when you compare with the realities, those are those ideal things we talk about. You know, ideally, any young person should be going to school and uh, get that all their, maybe their money for school fees is sorted. But is that the ideal situation? So in as much as we are striving to be somewhere, we also have to appreciate that we have challenges we are dealing with and see how we can move with these two to Kisonga. Um, that brings me to something different, mm -hmm. uh, the conversation that has been happening lately about the CAS position, that is the Chief Administrative Secretaries, mm -hmm. and there has been this heated conversation about the importance of those, of those positions. Mm -hmm. Now, in the last uh, regime, we had four CASs from the youth mm -hmm. uh, bracket. Mm -hmm. What do you think uh, is the future of this coming up, uh, in the, given that you're also part of the <laughs> UDA <laughs> leadership? So what do you think? is going to, what, what do you project will happen? Uh, honestly, you know these are political, initially these positions, people argue that they were not constitutional, mm -hmm. they have th to go through the public service, mm -hmm. and the public service invited the public to give their views on what they thought. The public gave their views and you saw guys who are shortlisted, now mm -hmm. we are waiting for the president to actually appoint from the shortlist that was submitted to him. My anticipation is uh, young people would also feature in those, uh, in those appointments. Because in as much as people would argue, in the previous administration we had those positions, but because it was good then, no one had an issue about it. Mm. And you see these people also coming in to feel or complement whatever the government is doing. You know, you cannot, uh, like, let me give this example. Had Intai had gotten this position, even if people would argue that you're nominated, but now I have a platform to show people that I, I was actually nominated out of merit. You, you would never use a, a single doubt cases mm. to judge the rest of the public. So for the CSS appointment, surely, as a, an ardent uh, supporter of this current administration, 
embracing the challenges we have and looking forward to better performance for the future. I'm hoping that the young people would be featured in the appointments that are coming. It's one way of also breeding leaders. We want to transit to elective politics or other positions in this country. If you do not give people an avenue, you have no chance of knowing what they can do. Yeah. I would, you would condemn them forever. And Kumbe, you're sitting on very many great talents that would have been uh, showcased or be seen by the public by giving them those uh, opportunities. Another thing, this is a political process. You una lima ulichopanda. I mean unavuna ulichopanda. So as it is, if we serve at the pleasure of the appointing authority, if the president will deem certain people fit for those positions, who am I to say no? <laughs> I'm a beneficiary of the same. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that brings me to this uh, question as we talk about that. Um, the constitution advocates for 30% of tenders to be allocated mm -hmm. to people with special mm -hmm. needs, uh, women and the youth. I understand you are still trying to find your way around, uh, mm. given that you've said you're four months mm. into office. Yes, yes. But what but plans mm. do you have to ensure that you advocate for the inclusion of youths into Let this? Let me tell you, already that's factor I didn't for. But the problem we are having now, we have some, uh, what would I call them? We have some individuals who are using companies owned by young people to access some of those opportunities. You see, how do you, how do you stop that one? If someone has, a re has registered as a young person, they have their company, but they opt to give it out to an, an individual who has money or something is corrupting the system, you see? And it still comes down to the issue that most of the young people do not have the financial muscle not unless kujaribu kufanya hizi ndogondogo. But for those big tenders, utakuta there are people who are using those companies to get those uh, jobs and disadvantaging the real people. Where, where, when we, we, we actually come to that uh, bit, it's very difficult to actually enforce and know that this is not a uh, gasheri using this uh, mm -hmm. company. But the, the, is, uh, the law is very clear. You know, there's, a, there's already a law in place. But I always say in this country, we have laws in place. At times, the challenges is enforcement. And when, now, like now, we have uh, the distribution of subsidized fertilizer to farmers, of where, of which young people and women are largely the ones who do the farming in the villages. And there was an e-voucher system where guys were being registered online. Mm -hmm. But how do, you, how do you tell that eventually when these people, if they are the ones who will surely benefit, you know, you love some individuals who are taking advantage of that and, bu and buying several of those <laughs> gunias or fertilizers mm -hmm at the expense of the real young people or women who are doing that work. But I would like to challenge young people, even when you see an opportunity somewhere, aggressively go for it, lobby. Because these positions are not freely given or those businesses. And when you do not have the financial muscle, banks are actually supporting. The moment you have an LPO, banks will support you. But like uh, I'm telling you, we have quite a number of challenges we have to deal with when it comes to enforcement of the law. Because that's where the gaps arise. We already have the law that is protecting young people that surely they should be going to young people. But are they the ones who are using those companies? Um, I, um, as we come to... Mm -hmm almost a close of this, yes, of yes. this, of this conversation. Mm -hmm. I want to take it a bit personal now mm -hmm. to, to, to you as a person. Mm -hmm. How does your day look like? Uh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, my, 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 my week is as a lot of nini. My normal day begins at four. Oh, wow. I actually wake up at four. 
I, I do other things like uh, I would do a bit of cleaning, largely because anyway I'm a young person so I, I do not have the luxury to be at comfort and say someone will do it for me. Mm. I do most of my work. Then by the time it's six, I leave for work. The first thing I go is to the office at KICC and check if I have any other communications. By eight, I join committee work that goes all the way to 12.30. To 30 to 6.30 is Bunge sessions, that Senate. At times I might contrib ensure I contribute earlier so that I leave by around four and get back home to now concentrate on me. And at that point I have time to even talk to my mother, siblings. Mm. Then during weekends, I, on Friday I go to the village so on Saturdays and Sundays I attend churches, on Fridays I attend funerals. That's how my week time. looks like. <laughs> I wanted to ask you how you spend your free time, but I think... I, have free, I create free time mm -hmm. because you have to strike a balance between um, parliament work, between grassroots work, between you as an individual, uh, and also finding time to communicate to the people what you're doing. That is through coming to such platforms, going to radio, going to the churches as we do. In such uh, engagements, if you organize yourself that way, you are able to have a balance. And at some point, you just have time for you and reviewing what you've been doing the whole week, how you've been <laughs> engaging with people, of course, you might not be very perfect, mm -hmm. but I surely strive to make my life a bit balanced on those <laughs> angles. Are you looking forward to run for any elective seat in the future? Mm. Currently, I'm keen on serving in my current assignment. Okay. On the future, I think uh, those moments will dictate when we get there. Someone is asking me to ask you, mm -hmm. um, which English football team do you support? <laughs> <laughs> Saba ni, ni bao nyingi, but I'm a Manchester <laughs> United fan, oh. yes. <laughs> well, I'm yeah. mm. <laughs> How are you working in town? <laughs> I work with my head up high anyway. You know, let me tell you, uh -huh. once you choose a course, win or lose, you're there. And this, this I, will do, I will also like to relate to, uh, maybe like a parting shot or advice to young mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. When you make networks or relate or support people, mm -hmm. support someone who knows you. Whether the person loses, they, at least they know you. There's no point of supporting someone who does not recognize or someone who will not even mention your name in a room of opportunities. You would ask me how. It doesn't have to be a politician, mm -hmm. but there's that one person who thinks you make sense to whatever they are doing. So direct your energies there. Every other person needs positive energy to keep to keep them going. What yeah. five things can you leave the house without? Mm. Okay. Now uh, as a woman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, my phone. Mm -hmm. Then uh, lip gloss. Mm -hmm. And then um, some sweets are normally in my handbag. <laughs> and then. Um, uh, what else? I don't live with a comb because my hair is always uh, well done. Okay. I think they can't even get to five, those three. Okay. Yeah. Finally, mm -hmm. on the road, are you a cheater or a tortoise? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm a tortoise. <laughs> you don't like speed? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, I do what's... not. You see, even from my intonation, mm -hmm. I'm generally, I'm yeah. a generally a calm yeah. person even when i differ with you okay i'll i'll not be shouting mm -hmm. but surely i'll express my displeasure and people would wonder how then do you survive in the political arena that is also my strength <laughs> <laughs> thank you yeah. okay. thank you so much for mm -hmm. making time we really appreciate mm -hmm. it we really appreciate what you're doing in the society for mm -hmm. the women and mm -hmm. for the youth and we're looking forward to having more discussions mm -hmm. on more projects mm -hmm. and um, every other thing you'll be doing. Yes. We'll be keeping in touch. Thank you very much. That was Senator 
Esi Okenyuri, a woman, a phenomenal woman who is resilient, hardworking, and a go-getter. That is the strength of a woman.